Are you looking for a strong math program? In this video, I'm going to share about Singapore Math. It's the one math program that's pretty much worked for all four of our school age kids. So please stick around. Welcome back, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Yuri, dentist turned homeschool mom to five kids aged three to 12 years old. This year, we're in our ninth year of homeschooling. And we actually started this YouTube channel in order to document our life's journeys, whether it's about homeschooling, our hobbies and interests, our travel experiences, and our family read-alouds. If you can help our family out by subscribing, so that we can continue to make these videos, we would really, really appreciate it. Our kids love Singapore math, and it's pretty much the only math program that they've ever really gone through. And we have tried the levels up to level six. Even though the program is considered advanced, many of our kids are a grade level ahead. Singapore math is a mastery program, which means that a concept is covered in various ways before moving on to the next concept. And that's in contrast to a spiraling program such as Saxon Math, in which a concept is spiraled back over and over again throughout the program. Even though Singapore Math is considered a mastery program, there are spiraling elements because of the constant reviewing throughout the program, which has been really great. Yes? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, it's good. Thing. Okay. I initially wanted to go with Horizons Math because it was so colorful, but it turns out that Singapore Math is just what our kids thrive on. The black and white pages are great because they're not distracting, and that turned out to be the best for our neurodivergent 10 year old. And of course, the kids like the option to be able to color the pages. Our five year old who has completed the kindergarten level, which is the program or the level I'm going to be sharing with you today. She could color all day. So Singapore math has been the perfect fit for her. But enough of me talking. Let me show you the inside. The kindergarten level is broken up into two books, A and B. Looks like A is 158 pages. And B is also 158 pages. So let's go ahead and look inside level kindergarten A. So here we'll start with the table of contents. So it's broken up into 16 units. We're going to be learning about same and then different sets, counting to five, numbers to five, numbers to 10, number order, shapes, patterns, length, size, weight, capacity, equal sets, more and less. So kindergarten A is going to start with identifying the same. So here we are identifying which boxes have the items that are the same. And on every page at the bottom, there are suggestions on various hands-on ways to present the concepts that we're learning. So it's a good idea to have blocks, counters, um, some items that are the same and some items that are different, just on hand, just in case. In addition to hands-on suggestions, the program will share ways to encourage the child to maybe describe the concepts in their own words. For instance, ask the child to explain his or her own choice of answer on this page. So the book continues like this, where you get to identify same, at least in unit one, and then color. So it's a lot of black and white, which has been really great because that way we can actually color the pages. And now in page nine, we're moving on to identifying differences. And then page 15, we are starting to identify sets. So here we're identifying road vehicles versus air vehicles. And here we're sorting animals from the sea and from the forest. And here we're finding animals that have legs and animals that don't have legs. 
and we're continuing with the sets like this. And on page 39, the student is introduced to counter blocks. And here we're getting introduced to bar graphs. And on page 43, we get to be exposed to dice. And page 53 is basically getting a chance to practice reading charts. And I feel like this is a great skill to start learning as an elementary kindergartner. On page 60 is more of the learning to read charts. Unit 8 is about shapes, learning to identify them, and also matching them. Unit 10 is about lengths and being able to use different items in order to measure. Here we're using paper clips to measure, here we're using footprints to measure, and here we're using uh, squares. Unit 11 is about size. Honestly, all of this was actually pretty easy for our kindergartner because she has already been introduced to a lot of these concepts. But she had a lot of fun with them anyway. And here, Unit 12 is about weight. So figuring out what is light and what is heavy. That completes Kindergarten A. Now let's move on to Kindergarten B, which is the second half of the Kindergarten level of Singapore Math. So here are the table of contents. So it continues with the unit. So we left off with Unit 16 in the Kindergarten A. Now here's Unit 17. It goes all the way through Unit 32. So first we're going to compare numbers, then uh, then learn about tens and ones, then numbers up to 20, number bonds, addition, counting on, subtraction, part, counting back, addition and subtraction, numbers to 40, ordering, time, numbers to 100, even and odd, and lastly, fractions. First, in Unit 17, we're going to compare numbers. And we can compare one more, so draw a set with one more. So here, there are five balls, but we're going to draw a set with one more. And that's what we're doing in all of these. And then, and then continuing with that, which set has one more than the one pictured here on the left? So here's one more than three is, and then we can visually see and count. This is a great way to introduce the concept of adding and subtracting for younger ages. Still we're talking about one more. On this page we are addressing one less. So here are three fish. We're going to draw a set with one less than those. So we'll draw two fish. So we continue to do like that. So identifying which one has one less on this page. So this is like subtracting, basically. The, when we were doing one more, it was more like adding, and now we're looking into subtracting. What, what number is one less than eight? What number is one less than five? So we're going to go over all of that here. And then page nine, we're comparing numbers, looking at them to see which one is greater. So which set of butterflies is greater? So 6 is greater than 5. 
So same thing, same concept. And then next page we're talking about which one is smaller or less th lesser, less than. On this page, we're addressing, are there less children or less balloons? And I like this page. You could totally visually see which one is more or less. So they're all, these stars are all lined up, and you can see which set has more or less. And now unit 18, we are learning about tens and ones. And I really like this because by coloring 10 of the items, the child can clearly see how many ones are left over. So here we obviously don't have any ones left over. But the next page, we see that after counting 10, so one set of 10, there's some left over. And at that time, our five-year-old wasn't very good at writing her numbers but she was able to tell us verbally. So here we're doing the same thing, but we're counting blocks. And now we're moving on to unit 19, where we have numbers up to 20. So you're gonna get some connected dots, and then filling in the missing numbers in this caterpillar. And we're filling in numbers that are missing. Unit 20 is introducing the child to number bonds. So once we count how many are in this box and then how many are in that box, we can be able to figure out how many are all together. So it's almost like part to whole. So it's showing that, but in more of a pictorial way. See, here's where we have the part to hole. Okay, unit 21. Now we're moving on to addition. So we're adding items in order to get the total. Now in unit 22, we are learning about counting on. So for instance, from two, we count on three, three more. So two, three, four, five. That'll be three more in order to get to our answer, which is five. And now here on Page 64, we are showing addition in another way, in a new way. Do you see how Singapore Math takes a concept and pretty much shows a child different ways of presenting that concept? Okay, unit 23 is about subtraction. So here's some little word problems that the child can try to solve. There's more subtraction. So here you write down the total of grasshoppers and then how many are crossed out. So we had two crossed out, so we put two and then we figured out five minus two and then equals three. You can clearly see that three are left over. Unit 24 is about part. So now we're looking at the parts opposed to the whole. the different parts, so parts to hold. Unit 25 is counting back, which is pretty much like subtraction. So here we have 10 balloons, take away one, you're going to count back and get nine. And here's a good way to count back. So you have seven and then you count back five. One, two, three, four, five, and you get the answer of two. And again, that concept of part to whole. Here we have some more simple word problems. Because in Singapore math, 
in the upper levels, you're going to see a lot of word problems where you're applying them to real life situations. Now here again, we're going to compare which answer is larger or greater. So now starting in unit 27, we will be looking at numbers up to 40. So we get to count in groups of 10. And here we get to break them down into tens and ones, like we saw before. And various ways to show the same concept. Unit 28 is ordering, which is basically sequencing and figuring out what order did things happen. So what do you do first? You wake up and then you brush your teeth and you eat breakfast and then you're off to school. And here you're ordering again, you're figuring out, um, I guess more like cause and effect huh, in a way. So you have your vase of flowers and then they're going to wilt, right, after time. And then here's a turkey, and then it's going to get eaten. And these guys are racing to the finish line, and this piece made it to the finish line. So here we're getting introduced to ordinal numbers, which are like first, second, third, that kind of thing. So this guy is first in line. There you go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, now unit 29 is about time. So the kids get to color this page and decide is it day or night? So we're introducing the concept of time by coloring this page. More recognition of day and night. And here are clocks, obviously, to represent time. And on page 139, another way to represent time is by showing your calendar. And now, here in Unit 30, we are now talking about numbers up to 100. And we have a lot of these tens counters. Okay, breaking up into tens and ones again. So unit 31 is about even and odd. And we get to see some odd numbers in order. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay. Even numbers in order. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Some drawing that we get to do on the page. And our last unit is about fractions. And we get to learn about equal parts. So on this page, you're learning about which ones have equal parts, and then you color the ones that have equal parts. And now you get to count how many equal parts these shapes have and write them in the boxes. You can see that now we're getting to see real fractions. So we have one part out of the total of or equal parts. So that's a great way to show this child what a fraction looks like. That concludes our Kindergarten B. I hope this was helpful to see how Singapore approaches its beginning math. Please share the comments below if there are any programs that have worked or haven't worked for you. And we'd love to hear your experience on using Singapore Math if you've ever tried it. Hello, <laughs> are you joining me? Okay, sure, close the door. And also we really appreciate you watching and supporting your channel. God bless you and hope to see you next time. Yeah, but in the meantime, check out this video on how we do our morning time. Do you like Laffy Taffy? Mm -hmm. oh, you Remember this day I had the blue one? We did have some.